Uh, Kimberly Gray is an RN with 30 years of experience, including board certification in holistic nursing, licensed massage therapist, certified healing touch practitioner instructor, and a licensed heart math trainer coach. Since 1999, she has incorporated holistic therapies into her bedside care and has been focused solely on integrative holistic health care <coughs> and wellness services since 2004. She is founder of the Healing Touch Program at St. Joseph's Hospital and the Integrative Wellness Program at Tampa General Hospital, both in Tampa, Florida. So please join me in welcoming Kimberly Gray today. Thank you so much. And I do see, I see a few familiar faces out here. So how many of you were here earlier? Just, okay. Um, just know that you will get to do a little bit of what you did earlier, but it is a different presentation. So I am so happy and privileged and honored to be here. And I'm doubly as honored that you guys chose to step through those doors and come to my presentation because there are so many opportunities here today and tomorrow but I think the fact that you have stepped through the doors where it says self-care is health care that even brings me more joy because my passion um, is actually helping people take care of themselves because I, ha I come from a background of being a caregiver 30 years of nursing how many of you in here are caregivers how many of you have children? Ah, so there are more caregivers in here than we thought. How many have parents? Yeah. So um, we care in so many ways. This isn't just about, oh, I'm a health care provider, so I care. Even a top-level executive cares so much about their job, they get stressed out and want to do it perfect. So self-care is important for absolutely everyone, not just somebody in a caregiving role directly. But this talk is bringing in the perspective from integrative health care. As a board-certified holistic nurse, I think it's important to see the, the whole of our lives and who we are when we are approaching um, taking care of ourselves. So for today, I want to kind of define integrative and holistic health care and wellness for you and give you some simple holistic self-care tools for stress management. For those of you that were here earlier, you'll get to practice that and expand on it as well. So you get more tools. And then recognize three holistic integrative tools to implement for daily <coughs> self-care. So um, it is going to be experiential. Sometimes if I talk a little quickly, it's not that I'm incoherent or scattered. I'm just so excited because there's so much I want to share in so little bit of a time for you. So this is a fact. It's not selfish to love yourself, take care of yourself, and to make your happiness a priority. It is a necessity. And I know when I was growing up, my mom, she would, there was this magazine that came out that called Self. And she would be like, oh, I don't want to read that magazine. Why would she say that? Because if I read something that says self on it, what does that mean? I'm selfish. I'm focusing on me. But what they're finding out with research is, if I don't focus on me first, what's going to happen? I'm not going to be able to give outside of myself. We can only give to others what we have the capacity to give ourselves first. So, anybody familiar with this little picture? It's so important. Secure yourself first. Um, and uh, at the bottom you'll see, we can only give to others. So when we get on an airplane, I fly up from Tampa, what's the first thing they say? The oxygen will, mask will drop down, and what's the first thing you should do? Put it on yourself. What's the first thing we would want to do? Here, let me help you, right? But if we haven't given ourselves the oxygen, we're not going to be, you know, we might put it on them and then what? Stop breathing ourselves. So it's so important to remember. And from an integrative perspective, how many of you guys are familiar with integrative health care? The word integrative, it used to be alternative and then it was complementary. Now they're using more of integrative because they're realizing it's not this or that. This is important that it all works together. So 
is anyone familiar with this space? It's Dr. Andrew Weil. And he is actually kind of like the guru or the founder of that phrase, integrative healthcare, out at University of Arizona. He teaches a lot of doctors of fellowship in bringing in holistic modalities. So um, integrative health care is that healing-oriented medicine. It takes into account the whole of who we are, body, mind, spirit. And I, it's not on there because that's not in the definition, but I add emotions to that because those of you that were here earlier realize that emotions kind of dictate everything that's going on in our nervous system. And it includes all aspects of our lifestyle. So it does focus on the least invasive, least toxic, and least costly methods to facilitate uh, by bringing, you know, the traditional in with holistic. And they're recommended based on the understanding that physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual all work together. So sometimes it's like, you know, gosh, I just don't get enough exercise. If I got enough exercise, I would be healthy. But what happens is we have those four domains, physical, mental, emotional, and then I add the spiritual, that all impact one another. So if we run, mentally that might clear our minds, and emotionally we feel happy. All of those work together. And we might even feel connected to something greater than ourselves, you know, hitting that spiritual realm as well. But the same reverse is true that, say, we're having a really bad day at work or Somebody says something that really hits us in the heart kind of hard. And then we get uptight and overwhelmed and sad about that. Then what happens to our physical body? We start to get tense, right? And also, then what happens to our thoughts? Can we think anything good about that situation when we're feeling sad, overwhelmed, distraught? No. So they all interact and work together. So something in integrative healthcare we also look at that, and, and this is so simple, this is almost like a tool to start noticing what your environment around you looks like. We all need these elements in order to thrive and be healthy and to live. These are the balancing elements. You're like, uh-oh, you're getting a little hoo-hoo-y on us there, Kimberly. Fire, water, earth, think about it. We need fire to live. What's in the sky every morning? A big ball of fire, right? The sun, it comes up, and then at night there's another, you know, there's another ball of light in the sky, the moon. Then we have water. Our bodies are made of what? I, I hear differing. Some say 70, some say 90. What? 78. 78%. 78 percent water. So that's why we're so influenced by the tides. I mean, if the moon causes the tides of the ocean to come all the way in and go all the way out, think about our bodies that have 78% water. What's all the shifting that's going on inside of us? So we have to be aware of our environment and how we're interrelating with it. So water, air, breathing isn't an option, is it? If we're going to have this human journey, it's not anyway. So air, earth, how do we need and require that earth element in order to live? What's the source of earth that we have? Besides stepping on it and getting energy from the earth planet itself, you guys just had it. Exactly. Food comes from the earth. I know when I got up here from Florida, I'm staying with my mom, and I'm from the Midwest, a produce farm, and I've been picking zucchini and canning green beans. That doesn't happen in my world in Tampa, Florida. I feel so alive here. I said, I think I've died and gone to heaven. Can you guys believe that? Because you're from the Midwest, you're like, what? I would love to be in Tampa in the sunlight. It's so rich here with with earth, with the beautiful trees, with the rolling hills, with the sunlight and the water, you know, the bodies of water. I sat in the hotel last night and looked out over the Ohio River, and I utilized that as a tool for self-care. I just sat there, and one of the tools we'll practice in a little bit, I utilized that tool to just rejuvenate myself. Just that view. So start looking around you, and then spirit is that life force, that essence, that that um, is within us. And that can be whatever you guys connect to that's, that's bigger than yourself and larger than yourself. Uh-oh. Running out of battery. I hope 
hope they have a plug-in. I have a plug-in. Maybe they have a, an extension cord somewhere. So some, I'll talk while I grab that out of here. Some integrated modalities that you might want to consider, and you know, you can kind of look over the list there, are um, we're going to get into a breathing exercise, diaphragmatic breathing. Of course, we know breathing is healthy for us, and it isn't an option. Is there a, an extension cord? Let me see, this has to plug in. See, this is one of those moments as a speaker, you always just practice the tools that you preach. Because as I said earlier, hey, don't worry. I'm not used to working with hardware. I'm used to working with hardware. I'm not going to worry about that too much. We'll wing it if we have to. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. So the diaphragmatic breathing, all kinds of breathing, but we're going to practice a little technique in a moment to make it really simple, short and sweet, but very effective. The heart math coherence tools is one of those. Progressive muscle relaxation, attitude of gratitude. So let's go back to this for a moment. How many of you guys live somewhere where there's uh, something beautiful in nature around you? Whether it just be a tree you enjoy or a little thing of water, whatever. But how often do we stop to take notice of it? Do we take it as often as we could? Maybe not. Or how about when we're walking along and we're seeing things, but we're so in our minds, we're not really receiving the joy that it could give us. So when we start looking at um, what is around us in our environment, any of these elements you can bring in, even inside of your house in the form of candles and light or a fountain or anything that helps your body, ah, say that, is a healing elixir for you. So coming back to these modalities, that attitude of gratitude. So the next time you're walking by the flowers, the fountain, the tree, the house that you so enjoy coming home to, really capture that emotion of gratitude. I really am just going to feel this gratitude for this moment. Even just a few breaths. It really is like um, a healing moment for you of self-care. So because we have busy lives, too many tasks, not enough time, we have to capture every moment we can the essence of it. Even if it's at the red light and we're looking at something outside that puts a smile on our face, rather than just kind of glancing and going, oh, saying, Gosh, I'm really going to be in this experience for the moment while the light's red, feeling that enjoyment or that, that amusement. Um, not long ago, I, I take all of these moments and I put them on a jump drive in my brain. Anything that makes me smile. It's part of my self-care now because it's such a stressful world. So I was sitting in a light in Tampa and this um, mother was crossing with a little girl who was really in the step, and she had curls that went like this, kind of like your beautiful red curls, and they were bouncing, and I just started laughing because I thought of Ramona the Pest. Uh, has anybody ever read Ramona the Pest? Remember Susan with the boing, boing curls? This little girl was walking, and I... I just laughed out loud. I said, that is going on my jump drive. Every time I just recall that little girl that reminded me of that, guess what happens in my body? 1,400 biochemicals rush in, and when we practice the breathing we're going to do, I add it with that. It is like somebody you know, gave me a shot of DHEA in my vein because I had that moment of self-care. So... The attitude of gratitude is important. I'm really grateful for that little moment of Susan with her boing boing curls. So guided visualizations, earlier we practiced where I said, just imagine a non-stressful moment. Any, anything you imagine in your thoughts, where thought goes, energy flows there, the body believes it's happening. They've actually done research that showed the mind doesn't care whether you're seeing it with your literal eyes or you're seeing it in, its, in your mind's eye, the brain, I mean. It thinks it's the same thing going on. So guided visualizations are very powerful for self-care if you don't have 
you know, time for the monk on the mountain moments, because a lot of people are like, Kimberly, you just get to walk around and do this easy relaxation stuff. It's not about that. It's about anything in a moment that will cause your body to let go and, and go into that relaxing side of the nervous system. So aromas, what do they do for us? Has anybody ever walked into a spa before? What do we do when we walk in? Oh, we're already resetting our nervous system. We haven't even gotten on the table. We haven't even signed in. And our nervous system is already settling down. So what can you do for yourself in your own environment that when you walk in, it's just like, oh, self-care moments. We're not talking having to take, I mean, if you can take that 20-minute meditation or prayer or self-care time, great. I'm talking about resetting all along the way throughout your days. Um, calming environments, we all have particular music that helps reset our system. And then healing touch and area-focused massage. We could go on and on. This is, this is like my cat, Dimitri. Mm -hmm. He brings me a lot of joy. All I have to do is think of him. So anything that provides that relaxation response in your body, each and every one of you have something that's different. Maybe it is a pet. Maybe it's a friend, a loved one, a child, a grandchild, a family. Every one of you, if you don't have a picture on your phone that makes you smile, I'm writing you a prescription to change it. <laughs> no, honestly. I have, this has been a prescription for some of my uh, patients in the integrative clinic. For example, a nurse who couldn't stop, she was so um, sorrow filled about a loss. So she came to work, she wasn't a nurse, she was a therapist. And she couldn't even work because it kept making her cry. So something that made her smile and laugh was her four year old's laughter. And so I said, your prescription is you're going to go home on your iPhone and you're going to take 10 seconds of him laughing hysterically. And then when you have that sense at work that you want to be in your overwhelm and sadness and crying, I'm not saying you shouldn't feel that, but can you work like that? It's a choice. It's a choice point. So she was assigned to step aside somewhere and play that tape. Guess what happened? She would reset, take care of herself. She could focus, access her thoughts, and she could move forward. So think of these little things that cause your body to relax. Because what happens in the past, the relaxation was response by Herbert Benson. You know, it was kind of discarded in medicine. Like, ah, that's that touchy feeling, little relaxation thing. That's not medicine. But what they're realizing now is it is medicine. Because what happens, think of a tight muscle. And then you relax. What happens? That what we're going to practice in a moment, a lot of people, they do relax. Our body relaxes, and everything expands. The muscles relax, and they expand. More blood comes in. And then what happens when more blood comes in? More nutrients come in. More waste products are taken away. There's a whole chemical process to the relaxation response. So we have more oxygen in every cell, more nutrients. And basically what happens is this supports our immune system. So start identifying for yourself what helps me go. <sighs> now, we're going to get to breathing for a moment. Breath is not optional. It is a necessity. So the quality of your breath can be a self-care moment. So Andrew Weil said, and I love this. This is why I include this. He said, if today you can be aware of breathing for 10 seconds more than you were yesterday, you will have taken a measurable step toward expanded consciousness, deeper communication between mind and body, which is also earlier we talked about communication between the head, the brain, and the heart. So you access that open communication and integration of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual functions. I can recommend no single more powerful or more simple daily practice for furthering your health and well-being. Now, how many of you guys have gone to the doctor lately and they said, um, okay, here's your prescription. Breathe a little more. <laughs> no. Focus on your breath. <laughs> Breathe with joy. Breathe a sense of appreciation. 
it's like medicine for you. And Jerome Smith said, breath, the link between mind, body, and spirit. So we're going to practice for a moment. This is a heart math technique. And those of you that were here earlier, no worries. Remember, it takes four to six weeks for a habit to form. So you're here just for a few more moments of trying to form a habit. But what this is doing is resetting your autonomic or automatic nervous system to where your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous systems are working together in unison. So you're bringing your attention to the area of your heart. If you need to put your hand over your heart, you can. But let's just all, um, we're in a big group setting, so if you want to close your eyes and just put your hand over your heart. And now I invite you to take some deeper breaths than normal. Slow your breathing down. When you breathe, the air is coming into, through, and out through your heart. Like a rising and a falling wave. They suggest five seconds, but most people can't go that deep at first. Find your body's rhythm. Ask it. Breathing in, breathing out. slowly opening your eyes and kind of seeing physically in your physical body in your thoughts or in how you're feeling did anything shift at all for anybody yeah I think I want to add this to my granddaughter's spa day <laughs> there you go add that to your granddaughter's spa day I love it <laughs> even if you're getting a massage heart focused breathing you know if you're getting something to help relax if you're in the middle of a really stressful moment, heart-focused breathing. It's bringing that evenness to your, your arousal nervous system and your relaxation nervous system so that it's in balance and everything in your body is communicating clearly and openly. So let's take that just one moment further. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that put a smile on your guys' face? Like, the moment you think of it, it makes you smile. A grandbaby. Okay. Babies. More than one. That's even better. What else? A dog. Boy, our pets really can do it. They're so unconditional love. What else? Grandbabies, a dog. Activities with friends. So going out with friends. Okay. Sunsets. The sunset. Gosh, we had a sunset over the river last night. So gorgeous. Just remember. We don't have to be there. Our brain doesn't discriminate whether we're really seeing it or we're seeing it in our mind's eye. So we don't have to drive all the way there. We can sit there and imagine it. So the sunset, nature, something in nature. Um, anybody else? Can everybody think? I want you right now, you all have an assignment to think of one thing that you could feel a positive emotion about, even if it's just appreciation and gratitude, happiness, joy, peace. Can you all recall one thing? Okay. So we're going to take this one step further, <coughs> and we're going to do heart-focused breathing where we feel like this. Okay. Now, know that... Look, she's just letting the air in, right? Know that this can be done with your eyes wide open. I was sharing this earlier. So don't think you have to close your eyes. It's a really... Um, heart map does have a technique where we... It's called heart lock-in, where you actually get coherent at, you know, for an extended period with your eyes closed. But this is something that will reset your nervous system in the middle of any kind of challenging situation. People won't even know it. A lot of times I'll say in the class, I'll say, I've been coherently breathing for the last 10 minutes. Did you notice? <laughs> so now let's do that. But if you want to close your eyes, you can. Bring your attention to your heart in the center of your chest. Slow your breathing down to where it's even in and even out.
Now make a sincere effort to activate that positive emotion. Just recall someone or something you appreciate in your life and breathe as if you're in that experience. Okay, and then we'll come back into conversation. It was like 50 seconds. Did it feel like 50 seconds? Did it feel shorter, longer, shorter than 50 seconds? Because the reason I'm saying that is because we say, I don't have time to do these things. But it's important to incorporate it with whatever that you're doing. So you guys added, could you kind of sense that emotion or sense being in that experience? a little bit, even just a little calm. Guess what you just did? You just gave yourself an increased dose of DHEA, the anti-aging hormone, and decreased your cortisol levels. Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. Like you didn't have to go buy it and get like hair where you didn't really plan on it being. <laughs> No, I'm not trying to minimize it. Uh, seriously, when we feel a positive emotion, 1,400 biochemicals are released in our system, and we start producing more vitality hormone and less stress hormone with that simple act of shifting. And I had an acupuncture friend once that said, well, Kimberly, are you saying fake it till you make it? And I was like, taken aback at first, and then I thought, no, I'm not. We get a choice as to what we're going to feel in the moment. Is it saying we shouldn't feel our sorrow or our pain? No. But to give you an example, my son-in-law, three years ago, he was in an IED explosion in Afghanistan, and he had a traumatic brain injury. He's a T4 paraplegic now, 28 years old they are, had been married three years, and my daughter, because, you know, she's been around me with all the healing, touch, and heart math, she's 28. People would be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry for you. She's like, nope. I am just so grateful Alex is alive. I am so happy he's alive. So she used these tools so that she could access her thinking centers. Because, I mean, in the beginning, I was, I was there day one at Walter Reed, immersed in that wounded warrior world feeling their sorrow energetically. They're walking along going, well, that was part of my job description. And they have a wife, you know, maybe two, three, four limbs gone, and the wife is pushing a baby and pregnant again. And they're just like, well, it's part of our life now. But what was really radiating was the sadness. So my daughter said, I'm going to focus on my gratitude and appreciation. That way, when I have to sign another consent form, I can access my thinking center in the frontal lobe. Now at night we would go back, I would do healing touch, and, and she had a lot of stuff <laughs> and a high state of, pardon the expression, passivity. You know, she was angry and upset and overwhelmed and <coughs> sorrow filled. But in that moment of making all those decisions, it would not serve her. She couldn't access her thinking center if she was like that. So I was so proud of her for staying in that state of gratitude and appreciation. And on the other side of it, and there's no judgment in this, but it was my observation of like, wow. His mom had had a lot of losses in her life. So she stayed at Walter Reed one week and ended up going back to Florida and got on antidepressants, anti-anxieties, went to counseling, and never could go back. And she couldn't function through any of the days. And she ended up getting sick. Because of the stress her body was under from these overwhelming, stressful <coughs> emotions. So they both had a right to be really angry and sorrow-filled. But Holly utilized that tool of positive emotions. Are you guys kind of getting the gist of this? Any moment of the day for our own self-care, when we're feeling ourselves being wound up at, like a top <coughs> or stewing. Does anybody in here ever stew? <laughs> Ruminate. It might be, remember the brain, 
it could be 20 years ago, and if we're thinking about it now, the body thinks it's there in that stress. Our self-care is to recognize self-awareness. Gosh, I'm, I'm really feeling angry about this in this moment. Is that going to serve me? Is that going to help my health? Is that going to help me know how to move forward from this? So um, the question is, what is taking our breath away? Earlier, some people said, I, you know, we hold our breath. And we really do. I learned this through the trainings in, in large corporations. The leadership, they'll be like, wow, I didn't realize I just hold my breath all the time. I'm not even breathing. Or we breathe like what? Shallow. Right? And we don't know it until we go, <sighs> and somebody says, what's wrong with you? <laughs> right? <laughs> Did I make you mad? <laughs> no. My body just needs more oxygen because I'm breathing shallow. So stress is, um, I won't go deeply into it because I want us to have some more practices, but stress isn't the pile of dirty laundry or my husband got paralyzed or my kids are really giving me a hard time or I'm losing some of my body functions. Um, or darn everybody around me is using technology and I don't know how but but now I have to learn how and that you know I grew up with the ch -ch -ch. I love doing the dial phones they're so much fun right they give me a joy moment <laughs> the old school but now it's so technology my mom's on Facebook she's on you know, the internet I'm like this is like blowing my mind my grandkids they're seven five and one the five-year-old at three was using the iPad. So there, this world is so filled with more stressors than even when I was young. So it isn't the events or the, all of the things that we have to focus in, it's how we feel about it. It's the imbalance that happens uh, because of our response to it. So do you guys ever feel that way? And you thought there was stress in your life. Well, sometimes. Earl, I'll tell you when I felt that way. Before my first presentation, because I couldn't leave Tipa, she was just too engaging, I got in here and I couldn't find my port to connect my Mac to the thing, and my technology was on here. And, and so I kind of felt like that. There's like seven minutes, and I'm like, what am I going to do? So I heart focused, I heart breathed. And I thought, I'm just going to appreciate that someone's going to show up and help me. <laughs> and, no, seriously, that helped me in access the thinking center where I could say, okay, what will I do if I don't find it? I did find it. But if I didn't find it, I could have accessed a great plan for what to do next. If I would have stayed in the, oh, my gosh, all these people are coming in now. I don't, you see what I'm saying? That emotion it would not have gone as, as smoothly as I felt like it did earlier. So anyway, we all have these moments. And I know I definitely have these moments. <laughs> Lately, when I look in the shower at the end, I'm like, whoa, I'm really losing more stripes. <laughs> Is anybody losing their stripes a little more? <laughs> Stress does that. So why are we concerned? Well, because it is 90% of illnesses have a deep stress component related to them and it reduces our immune functioning, our body's ability to um, repair itself and be strong. And what happens when we're stressed, you know, everything kind of shuts down, that fight or flight, our body starts in, you know, um, everything slows down in the gut and our heart rate goes up, but what really happens with the stress response is it upregulates our inflammation and downregulates our immune system. When we remember, it's not the event, person, place. It's how we feel about it. That's the stress. The stressful emotion causes increased inflammation. We're seeing an onslaught of what? Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, gut inflammatory stuff, chronic bowel stuff. Holly used the tools, my daughter, my daughter, but she ended up with a chronic inflammatory condition called interstitial cystitis because she was so, and I'm, uh, again, I'm going to use that word, she was so pissed off. So what ended up being affected? Her bladder. Now she's using that. They're working on in vitro, and she's got a little YouTube video now. 
because she's going to use her experience to help people that are getting pregnant that have IC. So that's how life is. If we do have lemons, let's make lemonade. And that's a form of self-care, being of service. But it really just starts breaking down the body's ability to repair itself and defend itself. So in integrative wellness, this is me at Tampa General. I developed an integrative wellness clinic. And then I said, you know, people didn't have time to come, so I took it on the road. It was funny. I had a little backpack and a little massage table. And there were little tools that you guys can bring into your life that can help switch you into that parasympathetic response. Because, again, they had little time. So I would even set up in, in a closet on, in an ICU. They would put a sign up that says, if you need your stuff, go to the other closet. Because <laughs> I would be like three or four hours. And for 15-minute time slots, they would come and get on the table. And be 10 minutes on the table. Aromatherapy. So find a scent that helps your body. We used lavender. I had some little organic lavenders made that they could take with them. And so we would, if they like lavender, again, it's your preference. What does your body resonate with? So they would smell the lavender. And then I would do some healing touch work. We're going to practice on ourselves in a moment just to start bringing the balance. I would say if you could go anywhere that your body would go, where would that be? There were two answers I usually got. What do you think they were? Massage. Church. Very good. I have pictures of that in a moment. The beach. We live in Florida, so the beach the woods, the mountain, a garden. It's always somewhere in nature. So think about where you've been that you just felt like you were in a blissful state. And know that you can recall that. So if they said the beach, I would put on the sound of the waves. And I would guide them as I did Healing Touch, and you're going to be able to do that on yourself in a moment, to the beach their body felt as if they were at the beach. They smelled the aroma of the lavender. And then guess what I guided them to? Heart focused breathing. So you see what I'm doing. I'm infusing all of this. I had a gentleman ask once he had a cast. And I said, well, you know, if you want me to do a little work to bring some balance, you know, I'm happy to do that. I said, it would take about 10 minutes. He goes, 10 minutes. He goes, can you do it express? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> but so these were really, I call them curbside consults. And we can do this for ourselves. What are the curbside consults for ourselves? These little self-care moments. You know, even if it's just waiting in the line somewhere or um, waiting at the red light, enjoying, rather than waiting, 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 I wish it would turn, I wish it would turn, I'm getting more frustrated, I'm producing more cortisol. Is it going to make the light turn red faster? No. So that's like three minutes you just stole from yourself of, wow, heart focused breathing and enjoying. Remember, if you add the emotion, you have more DHEA and less what? Cortisol. Enjoying that moment of self-care. So in these moments, within 10 minutes, uh, I would incorporate a little massage, but mostly healing touch and energy work with the heart-focused breathing and the aromatherapy and, of course, the music. We all do that, self-correct with music at the end of the day in the car, whether it's something to pump us up and give us energy and make us happy or something to kind of help us feel calmer. It works with the nervous system. So what? ask yourself. When actually, maybe before, as we finish some of our techniques here, I want you to ask yourself when you're in that coherent, which is, that's the state in the body, everything communicating, when we do these techniques, ask yourself, what is the best thing for me that I can take away on this day that I can incorporate on the little moments that I have of awareness for resetting myself and taking care of myself accumulatively throughout the day. So the benefits are you'll have better immunity, prevent diseases, increase your energy, sleep better. I see this all the time. People come in and they um, into the clinic and they sleep a lot better. Um, you know, the irritable bowel stuff is better when 
you use these tools to calm your nervous system, you can focus more and feel better about life, feel more vibrant. A lot of people fall into that apathetic resignation when they don't take care of themselves because they're overwhelmed, they're tired, and they're hurting. So um, all of these things occur when we have this self-care that looks at every facet, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So the question is, how do we achieve a return to internal calm, remember internal calm amidst the storm, amidst chaotic work environments, or um, other people's attitudes? <laughs> you guys ever deal with any of those, right? Remember, in the earlier session, I talked about when somebody shares with us with vomitious quality, that would be like that. <laughs> or like this. You know, that feeling. But it's not just all people around us and situations and environment. It is environment. It can be the noise. You know, those little pieces, ah! <laughs> the noise. It's irritating me. I actually Google searched a busy highway in Evansville. Now, this is what came up. <laughs> I said, I don't know, but since I've been back from Tampa, I haven't seen anything like that. I was like, I don't know. I was driving through Huntingburg with my mom the first day I was back for this little sabbatical visit to be here and share with you. And she's like, oh, work's let out in Huntingburg, Indiana. It was like, you know, maybe eight cars. And Tampa was voted the number one most stressful city in the United States by an ABC poll, and Florida the number one state. And I thought, you know what, I can believe it, because this truly is a picture of Tampa every day going home. So these all things that get in the way of us feeling <laughs> vibrant, technology, I mean, it's come to a point where we can't not use it. Uh, we have to stay up with the times, right? And if it's not using the technology, or we know how to use it, it's worrying about, oh, what if something happens on the grid and we don't have any electricity? Then how are we going to function? You know what I'm saying? No more cell phones, no more um, computer. So if it's not one way, it's the other, or the eternal dollars, you know, we're always worrying about that. So the truth is that it's all about perception. It really is all about perception. So I'm going to show you guys something really quick before we do another practice, and I hope this will work. We'll see. And all your assignment is, is to just... Watch this and notice what you notice and notice your perceptions. And I don't know if the lights go out in here. I don't think they do. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. Thank you, whoever did that. Can you guys hear that? For some reason, it's not. Okay, wait a second. Technology. Let me stop this for a moment. Because it doesn't have the full essence. I tried it earlier and the uh, sound worked, but we'll try this. Let's try it again. I'll see if that works. You guys hear? That wasn't as loud, so it couldn't. Ha it didn't have maybe the full impact that it usually does. But what was? Did anybody notice what the last thing was? 
that was said. You see the world through how you feel. Now, I know you guys couldn't really hear that for full impact, but you could hear it a little bit. So what did you notice about each of the films? Which time? Goes to the noise in the beginning. Okay. So enjoyable, peaceful, the second time. What else? Time seemed different too. It's like faster, like your world. We go through it faster, it didn't seem like it. Yes. So the first time, everything was moving more quickly. The second time, it seemed to move more slowly and flow. You notice people. You notice people's expressions, the kids, the, the smiles. Smiles. Yeah. yeah. You had more attention to detail in the second one, right? Okay, what else did you notice about that? Was that the same length of time? It was. It was the exact same video. But what I'm demonstrating with that is it's all about perception. Whatever emotion we're feeling is like a soundtrack of everything we're perceiving in our life. That's the exact same film. It's not the music that made us perceive it differently. This is a really important distinction. It wasn't the music. It was the emotion that the music evoked. Does that make sense? So it's really important for us in our self-care to realize what kind of emotion we're experiencing in the moment because it's the underlying soundtrack of everything that goes on in our life and how we respond to it. So when we are feeling stressful emotions, it creates... Um, an incoherent heart rhythm which makes us not be able to think clearly and we perceive chaos, fast movement. We can't pay attention, we can't focus. You see how I'm kind of putting this together? Stressful emotions cause that and positive or renewing emotions cause thinking clearly, feeling more peaceful, feeling like we can observe more of the picture and enjoy the ride a little bit more. So the, the fact is that <laughs> positive emotions are like medicine to us. This seems like kind of flippant and too simple, doesn't it? But it really isn't. There's a whole line of science on this now. I actually researched a program. You can get a PhD up at University of Pennsylvania on positive psychology. They have a whole line of psychology based on how these emotions impact us. I love this little guy, right? I like his smile. It might be a she. But so what are the things that make you smile? You know, is it getting together with friends or, you know, holding your grandkids or a baby or even thinking about it? Um, you know, hanging out with your pets. What happens when you just even think? How many of you have pets? What happens when you think about arriving home and they're, like, going to greet you? What happens inside? It feels good, happy. Does that give us energy or does it drain us? It gives us energy. So that's a self-care moment in the day when you realize, gosh, I'm feeling really dang. I can't think clearly. What am I going to do? Have some aromatherapy with you. Take a deep breath. I'm talking in between the next email. Take a breath. Imagine that thing that causes your smile, such as the puppy or the kitty or your grandchildren. It might be, as you mentioned earlier, it might be a sanctuary that brings you that peace, being there or imagining being there that causes that sense of calm and connection or any of these places in nature. So I'm going to kind of uh, skip over this one. We did it a little bit, but I want to move on to our last practice as well. So um, basically, we are an energy system that's renewing and restoring energy. We're either draining it or renewing it. So self-care, what does that do for us? It, it refills our battery. It's necessary. It's not an option. It's a necessity. So I'd like to invite just you guys on the front rows, if you don't mind, to come and stand in a circle with me. Just really quickly so we can get to the last exercise. But I want to demonstrate how truly energetic, um, how truly we are electrical energetic beings. So, are you guys all okay? We all done it. Yes. Amber, you can invite me. Okay. So, Amber, I'm going to invite Amber to hold the stick. Let's lift it up. Can everybody see? Yeah. Okay, so Catherine, go ahead and drop Carol's hand. 
Okay, go ahead and grab it again. Oh. Okay, Kathleen, drop Carol's hand. Now tap your uh, the pads of your index fingers together. Just tap them like you're doing patty cake. Now tap them. No, tap them harder. Well, hard enough that you're making a connection. Can you guys see what we're saying? Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the reason I'm infusing this little toy at, at the you know last hours of the day of our time together, the last minutes, is it's in this whole heart-focused breathing and bringing in things that cause us to feel positive emotions and you know, slowing our nervous system down and creating that relaxation response any moment we can is because we are a battery. We're electricity. We measure it in our heart and our brain. It doesn't stop there. It's flowing through our body and guess what? The science is now showing that it's three to five feet away from our body carrying the um, electrical current of what we're feeling. So that's why somebody can say, I'm doing great. And you're like, no, you're not. Because you're feeling the real story radiate from them. Because we're electricity radio towers. Uh, sending that message out. So the reason I'm bringing that up is we're going to uh, do a little healing touch self-care. So healing touch is a nurturing, holistic, integrative biofield, bioelectromagnetic field therapy that restores balance in this energy flow around the body. And in the last few decades, you know, scientists have gone from, well, there's no such thing as energy around our body to an absolute certainty that it is because we can measure it. And the important thing to know about that is that this electromagnetic field of the heart and our whole body, three to five feet out and beyond, that's only where we can measure it with the magnetometers, but it doesn't stop with us. That's what's important. So part of your self-care is looking around you and seeing who you have in your life. What quality of vibration are they bringing to it? Sometimes we have to make tough choices. Sometimes they are draining our battery far faster than we can refill it. Can anybody relate to that? Wow. So this is important to know, and I'm going to skip the research, which I love, but we don't have a lot of time for that. But what I will say is that they did research at the University of Colorado that said most seasoned and practiced practitioners through this touch, one electromagnetic field interacting with another, and we're going to interact with our own through intention. It, there's a law of physics that says when one interacts with another, it provides a change in the field. So the technique we're going to use on ourselves is literally connecting the circuit of this flow, of this electromagnetic field through our body. And so the average practitioner's hand was anywhere from 0.3 to 30 hertz, mostly in the 7 to 8 range. And look at what that does. My daughter fractured her wrist two weeks ago completely through. She works at Deaconess, so I did lots of healing touch work to restore the balance there because, look, that vibration helps support bone growth, ligament healing. So this is something you can bring to yourself. And the primary ingredients are compassion and intention and centered heart. And we're going to practice a little technique. Don't even look at the title because it seems overwhelming. Basically, it's hand still. Basically, it's holding yourself with the compassion that you hold a newborn baby. When we hold a newborn baby, what are the qualities of that when we hold a newborn baby? What is the sense we're radiating from us in that three to five foot field? Tenderness, care, compassion. Where is our focus when we're holding a 2014 model baby? Are we going, oh, hey, yeah. Where's our focus? On the, baby. On the baby. And what is our intention? All good things for that baby, right? This is what we're going to do for ourselves for self-care to bring balance. We know when something's unbalanced in our body. How do we know? There are a few ways we know. It might feel tense. What's another way? What talks to us when we know something's way out of balance? We hurt, right? 
It might be, I'm sorry? Fatigue. Fatigue. We feel tired, overwhelmed. Does anybody, somebody will give you some news? This happens all the time with people that lose a spouse in older age. They're, they lose a spouse. They feel so sad and overwhelmed. They were perfect health. Guess what happens a week later? They have a heart attack. The electromagnetic field gets so congested from this sorrow and pain that their heart really can't even function with this imbalance. So we have to ask our bodies, where do you, where do you want some care right now? And all that we do is set our intention, whatever I need in this moment for my highest good, because we don't know what we need really, but we know where we might feel tense or tight or a little unsettled, and we place our hands in that area as if we're holding it like a newborn baby, bringing that compassion to ourselves. We know it when we're two years old and we get a boo-boo, what do we do? Ow! We start rubbing it. We know inside of us that touch starts restoring balance. So then we're going to hold the hand over the area, breathe slowly, inhaling a sense of peace, calm, and compassion for yourself. Hold it with that focus. And then um, we're going to practice this. So as we go into that, I'm going to show you a few pictures. And I invite you to say, is that, is that something that evokes a sense of peace and calm? compassion, that I could really relax and have this experience. I'm going to put a little music on for you. So maybe Fort DeSoto, maybe it's the sun setting over the river, ocean, maybe it's in the forest. And if we could have the light down for this, it might be nice. Thank you. A place where I get that sense is in Sedona. It's playing my flute, bringing the music in. It might be that sanctuary, the sun setting with the distant laughter of people at the beach. Again, our little pet. So find what can bring you that. Let's find an area of your body that you would just like to hold it with a little intention for balance. Just hold your hands wherever you feel led. And set that intention, whatever I need in this moment. It's just a thought inside. This is for me, my self-care, because I deserve it. And bring in that heart-focused breathing. Just comfortable. Let your body find its natural rhythm. Feeling that sense of compassion for you and all that you give. It's now time to receive for yourself. Slowly coming back into awareness in the room, but if you want to keep your hands there, just continue that heart-focused breathing with that sense of calm and peace. And if the lights could come back on, if I don't even know if we want them back on now. <laughs> just pay attention to your body. Who who can reach the lights back there? Oh, thank you so much. Check in with your body. How does it feel now? What did you notice about your hands? Did anybody notice anything about their hands? They kind of tingled. You might have felt a little warm. Or you just might have felt the awareness 
that you were holding yourself with a different sense than hurrying through the day. So when you're looking for that self-care plan, which is so necessary, realize that however you set the tone for the day in the morning, you earlier saw this, set the tone for the day with the affirmation for the day, just bringing balance if you get up with that mental chatter, just holding yourself, whatever I need for balance right now, I'm going to do some of that breathing. If, if aromatherapy brings that sense of calm to you, bring that in. Just start being aware and ask yourself, what is it that I need? To, for physical, for mental, for emotional, for spiritual, just a little tweak in each area impacts all of them. So in the beginning, start with setting the tone for the day so that during the day, when you notice you're overwhelmed or you're tense or um, you're reacting to things because you're exhausted, you can reset more quickly if you've already set that tone at the beginning of the day. Even if it's driving into your place of service, just enjoying the sunlight and setting the intention, I'm just grateful to have this day to get up and be of service. That is so powerful. So you can reset during the day and then use these tools at night. I have a, a healing touch technique. I balance all of my energy. And from some old injuries, low back injuries from accidents, I fall asleep right here. Because, you know, it just starts bringing this balance there. And my body just lets go. So I'll wake up and go, oh, okay. I'm going to kind of support the rest. But it doesn't matter because I set the intention, which is what you do. Whatever I need in this moment is what's going to happen. Opening that current and flow with the touch and intention, but also shifting the hormones and the um, quality of our nervous system with the breath and the emotions. So how in a busy day, this is the one I was telling about earlier that I show to executives because they're like, we don't have time for that, Kimberly. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, do you ever do any of this? When you have a few moments to wait, uh, you know one I really love is I use the, uh, an electric toothbrush because it times two minutes, so I try to be a good girl. But it does all the work. So I said, wow, what a great moment for self-care. I'm not only brushing my teeth, but instead of going, okay, then I have to do this and this and this, I just start heart-focused breathing and enjoying positive emotion, more DHEA, enjoying the way it feels as the brush, you know, motivates. So we practiced heart-focused breathing. Quick coherence is bringing in the emotion, using that attitude of gratitude balancing with healing touch so I don't want I want to really empower you guys to you know bring that in if your shoulders are tight just hold it and take those deep breaths but hold it with intention for balance and for self-care it's so profound and again it's not selfish to love yourself take care of yourself and to make your happiness a priority it is a necessity not an option. So ask yourself, how can I restore more balance to my own environment around me, to my body, mind, spirit, and energy, which is through the technique we just used? Shift my perception about things that cause me to feel stressed. Or how do I even get started? Because after all, self-care is health care. So thank you for your presence. I know we've gone over by a few minutes. Questions.